Okay, I have some paint that I want to mix. So I'm going to make myself a paint mixer. Um, I did it once and it worked real good. I took a spring and stretched the spring out so that it stayed stretched. And then I made a little, I just used the end of it to make a little uh, handle that you could put in your drill and then you could mix the paint that way. It acts like a screw and draws the paint up from the bottom of the can. Uh, I want to make, I'm going to do this one just out of wire. Uh, spring steel is better, but you know, who has the right size spring necessarily? So I'm just going to do it out of wire. See how it goes. So I've got this piece of pipe with a notch cut out of it. I really should put a hole in it. And uh, it kind of holds wire while you bend it around something. The springs I have are smaller diameter, so I do want one that's a little larger diameter. So this pipe should do that pretty good. I'm not sure how many wraps I want. Maybe, uh, yeah, you can always cut them off, so maybe a little more than you think you need. And also, I did this, this is my second attempt, and the first one was too little wire. So always grab more wire than you think you need. Now you need the need a thing to stick into the drill, so I got some vice grips to go with the vice here, and let's see, kind of do it by hand too. You want to get this part so that there's a, it's crossing the exact center, or as close to it as possible, of the spiral. There, that's better. And we'll take our vice grips and grab it so that it is also in the center. And there's our little handle. However off from the center it is, it's kind of how wonky it'll be when you spin it. Let's just try this. this I'm going I'm to straighten it out more off camera, but we'll just try this. There you go, you can see how far it is off. And if you spin it real fast like this, now a lot of times it flies over and bends and you gotta bend it back, but for whatever reason, it's working better than normal. Okay, let's try it on some paint. Okay, I got this um, paint at a garage sale. Whenever I'm at a garage sale, I look for oil-based paint. Because oil-based paint is the best. You can paint metal with it. And I bought this, or you know, I think they might have just given it to me. They either gave it to me or I bought it for like a dollar. Thinking it was oil-based. And it's been sitting around a long time and I thought it was water-based. But now that I'm looking at it up close, this kind of looks like it is oil-based. And what is that? That ain't water. It says VOCs on it, so I think that means oil-based. Whatever, it's old. And we'll try out our little paint mixer. Let's see. Ain't quite right, but here we go. Bad to me. I mean, for the paint probably 10 to 40 years old, somewhere in there. It ain't new. This mix is working pretty good. I'm 
you can buy mixers like this, but I'll just make one. And you forget about it, and the paint sticks to it, and you don't want to try and get it off, you can just throw your mixer away and make a new one next time. And if I turn on the drill right now, it'll fling paint all over. And I'm doing this on top of a metal table, so maybe I'll leave that stuff there and see if it creates a nice little bunch of oil-based paint spots on my metal table that resist the weather. I don't know. Okay, let's try and do a little painting with this. Um, I've got a funky piece of plywood that's been out in the rain and gotten mud splashed on it. And I would like it to be nice and white. That's probably not how it will end up, but I'm not good at painting. I think I'm too impatient. Uh, I like to just throw a ton of paint on there and you get like big drips and stuff. But sometimes you'd rather have big drips than the alternatives, which are don't paint it at all or take a bunch of care painting it. Makes me think of a story. I was, I'm was i an electrician, and uh, sometimes you like take a pencil and make a mark on the wall, like you know, you want to put in a receptacle or something. So, you know, like you do not use a sharpie to make a mark on the wall because that's hard to get it off. But anyway, sometimes you make a mark on the wall with a pencil, you make a small mark, you know, maybe a dot, you just do it where people aren't going to look, so on and so forth. But, you know, sometimes you just wish you could remove the mark well. And so, there was a painter on the job site, and I told him, you know, how do I get a pencil mark off the wall well? Like, you got any tricks? You're a painter, you know, you probably have a trick. And he's like, you use an eraser. And I was like, genius. And I've done it ever since, and... It works okay. I'd like something even better, but it's better than nothing. Okay, painted one side of that piece of wood. Covered it pretty good. Um, I have to wipe off this table here. Focus, please. Show you another trick. So this brush that I used, um, it's pretty cold today, but anyways, you leave this out for an hour on a hot day or a few hours on a cold day, you won't be able to use that brush anymore. So what you do is you just take a bag you don't care about, like from the grocery store, put it in there, and now it doesn't really dry, so you can just go back and reuse that brush. Now. You know, how long will it last? Here in the winter, or here in the November, it'll probably last days outside like this. But say you're doing it in the summer and you really want it to last days or weeks, you could put it in the refrigerator. Um, I've never put it in the freezer, but I bet you could probably put this in the freezer and come back in six months and just use it no problem right afterwards.